let me be clear right from the start. What I'm talking about here is not the man-made climate change you've heard of. I'm looking at this with another definition in mind. You hear that term, man-made climate change, and you might be thinking about Greta and carbon dioxide and sustainable development, or maybe you're thinking about carbon tax schemes and the scientific non-consensus and the UN global government takeover of the world. But the definition I'm using for man-made climate change is one of intentional destruction with the aim of orchestrating a collapse of Arctic sea ice and permafrost and whatever else they may be up to around the world. And with so much evidence not being in the favor of the official narrative, what do you get? More divide and conquer, perhaps one of the biggest wedges going on these days. Also, what I'm saying plays well with the Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 push to move the world's population away from the coastlines and into mega regions. So please, suspend what you believe you know about this topic and just consider what I have to say. Let's start with a story. In the book State of Fear, Michael Crichton showed us a world somewhat like our own with the catastrophic climate change narrative being pushed through the mouthpiece of the media and people poised to gain from public adoption and support of the story. In the book, there are disasters to be blamed on the greenhouse gas narrative, but really they're being triggered by eco-terrorists. The intentional destruction described in the book is the work of eco-terrorists deliberately amplifying and instigating events to drive the public to a state of fear in which they're easily manipulated and led, deferring to experts in the hopes that they might be saved. There's another part of State of Fear, which published in 2004, that coincides nicely with our current reality. Crichton wrote of an island nation, Vanuatu, that was suing over climate change. Look in the news today and you can see that low-lying Pacific islands are suing over climate change, with the nation of Vanuatu prominent in the discussion. I know, Vanuatu, Vanuatu, not the same thing, but it was close enough and with the same narrative to give me a chuckle. The greenhouse gas climate change story drives the nightmare world, furthering surveillance satellites, monitoring devices like Smart Everything, and how nothing that has been produced can continue to be produced that way because sustainability. Enter synthetic biology and the remaking of everything natural. So do I think the loss of Arctic sea ice and who knows what else is due to human causes? Yes, but not because of what characters like Greta say. When I'm talking about man-made climate change, I'm referring to the generational endeavor to conquer the North. It's reported that this Northern Passage has been a dream and goal for centuries, not only for the transit possibilities, but also the natural resources and the power. Now, one way to look at this is that with, you know, when has Mother Nature, or whatever you want to say is the source, given you a new ocean? In the April 15, 2017 edition of The Economist magazine, they told us that Arctic sea ice is melting and that while for some it's a cause for concern, for others it isn't happening fast enough and they'd like to help it along. It talks about the development of flexural gravity wave resonance using submarines and its superiority to icebreakers and the destruction of the ice sheet and how they can further amplify the effects through the addition of things like spoilers and vortex generators. And then consider the collaboration between Russia and Japan and other nations. In 1995, a Russian icebreaker cargo ship, the Kandalaksha, arrived at the port of Tokyo for some historically important experiments. The International Northern Sea Route Program, or INSRA, is an international co-project led by Japan from 1993 to 1999. 
in order to conduct research on a northern passage. Russia, Norway, and Canada have all joined. The ships departed from Yokohama, Japan, passed through the Bering Strait, and entered the frigid Arctic Ocean. It finished its first voyage when it arrives at Kirkins, Norway. This, I believe, will not be the last expedition. We have worked so well and achieved so much. This marked the beginning of the studies of that new route. Those studies were conducted before the Earth began to witness dramatic climate change in the Arctic caused by global warming. These studies showed that the world at the Northern Sea Route was not just a dream, but a reality. Now, instead of deliberately trying to carve out a route, science stepped in to study it to death. As a result, we get the computer modeling, satellite swarms, and loads of other research avenues to study the loss of what they were working to conquer. This is really ice-breaking that uh, uh, now that China is working very closely with Russia, uh, when Russia provides the technology to break the ice along the roads, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, the melting of uh, the uh, Arctic ice uh, cap uh, is really on an uh, acceleration speed, so therefore, uh, you know, there has been longer time that we can fully utilize this in terms of transportation. Apparently, international science has been chipping away at the mysteries locked in the Arctic for decades. In the 1950s, the dew line was installed in the Arctic Circle, with 63 radar and communication stations extending 3,000 miles from Alaska to Baffin Island. Smashing their way through and altering the Arctic wilderness with runways and roads, the distant early warning line was justified by the fear of the day. The advancement of high-tech electronics was justified in this development of the Arctic, too, through projects like the Dew Line. And today, the North requires the further development of technologies to save the melting ice, transitioning us to a so-called sustainable world. Unfortunately, we've been letting the manipulators define all the terms and run the story. For shipping, the Arctic route is cheaper, being a shorter distance to travel than the current option, which is also said to be plagued by pirates. They even made a Hollywood movie about it. And so for fuel usage, time, which is money, and safety from pirates, into the Arctic they go. They'll probably end up saying that it's the more sustainable route because of the fuel savings. It's not as though they hide their aspirations, but maybe they're just hard to notice over the divide and conquer campaign taking main stage. In the fear that's pushed, like with the methane, don't worry, because they've got harvesting those mean old methane hydrates all covered. And by such good fortune, it's a cash cow. Don't you fret, they'll take care of it all for you. And I think it's also important to keep in mind when people are speak about things like more powerful storms that are happening more often around the world that we know that private industry and the government have been tinkering with things like the moisture in the air at least since the 1940s. Who knows what all they can do now? Maybe you want to point out how there's loads of ice up there. I wonder how much is first-year ice compared to multi-year ice, the stuff that can survive the summer. The news of research vessels getting trapped in the ice on purpose to study the situation. Some people laugh at the idea, saying that they thought the Arctic was going to be ice-free. Well, I'm not a scientist or an expert, but I would imagine as the seasons change and the north tips away from the sun, plunging into months of darkness, things are going to get pretty cold. <laughs> this going to be ice. But is it ice that can be easily pushed through with their reinforced cruise ships and liquid natural gas tankers and such? I mean, I don't know. I've not been there yet. 
but I have been watching the sea ice cam in Barrow, Alaska, the most northern part of the U.S., and it's November, and I see no ice. And this has to have had an effect on the subsistence hunters in the area. They need the ice. I know I've noticed some crazy weather in my area, especially winters, with record-breaking snow one year, and most recently an on-again, off-again winter where it would snow and melt over and over in huge temperature swings in the matter of a day. I get that things change due to natural causes, and I'm aware that in some places it has been colder than ever before for some years now. My only point in mentioning this is that if there has been a drastic change to the state of the ice, it would make sense to me that due to air and ocean currents, weather elsewhere might be affected. I've been looking at this topic seriously for a few years. At one point, I called several places along the northern coast of Alaska and over the Canadian border just to ask normal people there what was going on. And the reports I heard was that there had been a definite change in the ice. It leaves earlier in the year and arrives later in the year than it did in the past. I've seen videos of elder natives from that area speaking of the same thing. And I've got books, some older, speaking of the summer season, June to September, when some of the ice would melt. Now, I am not ruling out natural causes like the solar cycle as drivers of this change. I'm only attempting to make the case for what I see as a likely contributing factor, eco-terrorists. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that I have it all figured out. I have no way of knowing how often subs are run through making these resonance waves. I don't know if their ice bots are able to generate the force. And I don't know what else they've got going on. I'm just seeing all of this for a few years now, and I'm watching the story play out and the calls for geoengineering to save the ice, and I think it's a perfectly reasonable suggestion that we just refrain from smashing and shattering the ice first, see if that works, and then maybe discuss their hubristic plans like releasing particles into the stratosphere to block the sun or filling the Arctic with glass beads or spending $500 billion building some crazy pumping operation with the hopes that they can cause a refreeze. It just sounds like money, 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 you know, justifying the science. Thank you for listening. Can you see what I'm saying here? I mean, it's more word magic to manipulate the masses. We have to stop letting them define things. This storyline is being used as an excuse to switch over from all things natural to a fully synthetic nightmare world. It's problem, reaction, solution, yet again. This remote part of the world may now be put to whatever purposes men wish.